So in our section two, we talk about the square root of a function. We talked about the transformations in relation to a radical graph. Now we're going to talk about if we already have a graph, and we're going to take the square root of it. So when we attempt to take the graph the square root of the square, yeah, graph the square root of a function, we can do it in a few ways, and they're very close related to what we've already been doing. Since we know that y equals f of x and y equals the square root of f of x are determined by taking the square root of the value of y for all defined values of the square root of f of x. So what that means is if we create a table of values. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to do this table backwards. So y equals 2x plus 1. If our x value is 4, 2 times 4 is 4. 8 plus 1 is 9. Keep on going. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1, 7, 5, 3, 1. And I do purposely leave this space blank to help explain a few more things. Uh, 2 multiplied by negative 0 0.5 would be a negative 1 plus 1, 0. Now, if you put any number that is less than negative 0 0.5 into this equation, you're going to have a negative number. Now when we take the square root of this, which is what this is, I think, actually red is a bit nicer, we can do the square roots of these numbers. So when we take the square root of 2x plus 1, what we are doing is we're taking the square root of all of these numbers. Now, some of them are easier than others. I have the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 0 is 0. The other ones we have to actually plug in. Uh, quick on my calculator. Uh, I'll do this one backwards, too. So, square root of 7 will be approximately... 2.65 square root of 5, approximately 2.24 square root of 3, if I remember that one correctly, 1.73. Type on my calculator, double check that. Yep. Now, if I type in, again, I'm leaving this space blank just but because we're going to do this right after. If we take the, try and take the square root of a negative number undefined, or it, you can't do that. There's it's a null set. It's a, it's not possible to do, at least not with the current high school curriculum where we are not talking about imaginary numbers. So now let's talk about what happens if we graph them both. Now, the good news is, yes, you could use the table of values. But we should also know that this is a line. So 2x plus 1 means our y-intercept is 1, and our slope is 2 over 1. So if we have our graph, 1, and our graph is 2 over 1. Or, sorry, our slope is 2 over 1, so up to... Right one, up two, right one. Or down two and left one. So I'm going to be as careful as I can as I connect my dots here. Because I want to keep this blue. Otherwise, I would use the actual line tool. Yeah, that actually didn't turn out too bad. So that is the y equals 2x plus 1. Now, if we're going to find out the square root of this, there's some really nice numbers that we can work with. For example, when our x is 0 0.5, the y value will be 0. Negative 0 0.5, if I can say negative. So when our x is negative 0 0.5, on both graphs, oh, it's zero. When our 
x is 0, the y is 1. When our x is 1, the original graph is at 3, but the square root of 3 is 1.73. So we can approximate that. Let's see, 1 and 1.73, we can approximate as there. Let's see, 5 is 2.24, right? So when our x is 2, so just make sure you're not. You don't have your head up, make sure you're paying attention. X is 2. The Y value is 2.24. X is 2. 2.24. X is 3. Y is 2.65. X is 3. 2.65. And I know that when our X is 4. So what you'll notice here, now I do, again, I do purposely leave this a little blank here. Our Y value here is 9. Actually, I'm going to change the color. Y value is 9 right there. So 7, 5, 3, actually 1. And I'll put the 1 there. What we did is we took the square root of our y's because our y is defined by plugging the x, at, x into this equation and then we're taking the square root of it. So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 7 right here is 2.65. The square root of 5 is 2.24. The square root of 3 is 1.73. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 0 is 0. So again, we're looking at the y values and we're taking the square root of it and just putting it below it. Now, we can connect some of these dots, but we're not going to connect these dots that are in between our x values of 0 and 1. So when our y values are in between 0 and 1, I'm just going to connect this part just so you can see that, yes, we are starting off with a nice old radical graph. I could be very off on these points, but we're just doing it. This is essentially just a sketch, but we're being as accurate as we can with the given information that we have. Now, the rest of it, just as long as you don't somehow try and do something like that, you're fine. Okay. So now is the point that I want to talk about these values when our y's are in between 0 and 1. Now, obviously, if we plug any number in between negative 0 0.5 and 0, so let's say negative 0 0.25. Say 2 multiplied by negative 0 0.25 would be a 0 0.5. 0 0.5, or sorry, negative 0 0.5. And 0 0.5, or negative 0 0.5 plus 1 would be 0 0.5. But when you take the square root of 0 0.5, I do not have that number memorized, so I have to type that in my calculator. So I take the square root of 0 0.5. And it is approximately 0 0.71. Now, I could have chosen any number in between. But let's look at that. Negative 0 0.25 has our x value. Negative 0 0.25, our y value is at 0.5. So for when our x value is that quarter, our y value is there. But when we take the square root, it's now a bigger number. It's 0 0.71. So when our x value was negative 0 0.25, the y value is 0 0.71. At that negative 0.25 for the x, our y value is 0 
which will be approximately there. So when we connect our dots, we're at, what we actually have to do, and this is true for any of these values that are in between 0 and 1, when you take the square root of any number in between 0 and 1, the value is a little bit higher than that decimal. You can test that for any number. You can test for 0.9. You can test for 0 0.8, 0 0.1. The square root of it is always going to be a little bit more. So here is our square root graph. Now, do you have to go through all of this extremely convoluted way for every single question? No, because there's an easier way of working through it. And it's looking at the characteristics of this that help us do that. Now, the second way that is to use primaries for sketching, but it can be very effective where you take the general locations of those. Now, this is a long convoluted chart that basically means this. Now, if we're going to graph 3 subtract 2x, first off, that's not a very nice way of writing it. We can always make sure that we rewrite our questions into ways that make more sense. Now, you can absolutely look at this and know exactly what to do. Or we can rearrange it to put it in proper descending order. 3 subtract 2x, well, that subtract would be applied to our 2, so that's going to be a negative 2x. This is a positive 3, so we're going to add 3. Now, this is a graph that's nice to work with. Our y-intercept is 3. Our slope is negative 2 over 1. So y is 3. Our slope is negative 2 over 1. So down 2, right 1. Down 2, right 1. Of course, the exact same of going down 2 and right 1 is going up 2 and left 1. So we can, again, I just want to make sure that this is nice and blue. Just easier to illustrate. I actually won't have to care about these ones, but I still like trying my best. So just like on the first page, we were making the connection that each of these values, so 9, well, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 7 is at 2.65. square root of 3 is 1.73. square root of 1 is 1. All that this table here says is we're just going to take the square root of our y's. And this is just telling where our graph is going to be when we take the square root of our y's. Now, I like starting talking about these two values. So basically, when our y is 0, our graph is going to be intersecting the x-axis. In other words, it's going to be 0. When our y is 1, it's going to be 1. So on our graph, again, we're looking at the y values. So when our y value is 0, the graph is at zero. When our y value is one, no, you don't want to have your head up right now, then you're going to be missing this. When our y value is one, so here, this is where our graph is, the square root of it is going to be one. Essentially, all that we're doing is taking a look at, at our line, and we're going to take the square root of them. Now, there are some values that are a lot easier. For example, we can look at where our graph is at 9. So the original line is at 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So right below where our graph is 9, we're going to graph the point 3. Now, if you don't know the square root of 7, you can type in your calculator. Or what's even fancier is I know that my graph is 4 right here so it's halfway in there so since our blue graph here is at four i can just go straight below that 
and put it at 2. So now we can see that we have some transform or some differences here. Now actually, what we just talked about is this aspect. When our y's are greater than 1, the graph of this square root graph is going below the original graph. So here, in the first point, when our y value is 0, our graph is going to be at 0. When our y value is at 1, our graph is going to be at 1. When our y values are anything above 1, the graph, the square root graph, is going to be below our original graph. So you can see that all of these points, I'm just going to connect, start from our, my y value of 1. I'm going to continue and make my... Now this is really bad. I can do it better freehand instead of doing this recording. I'm actually going to try that a little bit. I'm going to try that again. There we go. That's a bit better. So now we're below our graph. Last one I want to talk about is this aspect. When our y values, because fx is y, when our y values are in between 0 and 1. When our graphs are in, in between 0 and 1, just like we found out in here, when our y values are in between 0 and 1, the square root graph is going to be above the original graph. So like here, in between 0 and 1 for our y's, our graph is going to be a little bit above. Now, to help illustrate this a little more, typically what I will do is over-exaggerate it. So, but I just want to show you first, don't write this part, but I over-exaggerate it to show you that you are above. Now, it's, it can be difficult to do that. So this is, this is an over-exaggeration. It does not go that high above it. It should only be basically a little bit above because it still needs to be a nice curve. I like starting with that over-exaggeration. Yes, this is what you should be drawing just to help illustrate that we are just above that original graph. Now to make just a few quick relations. Oh, forgot about the most important part. When our y values are less than zero, our graph is undefined because we can't do the square root of negative numbers. So since we can't do the square root of negative numbers, we're not graphing anything down here. So if by chance, do not write this, you say, oh, this is going to keep on going down. Like, no. You cannot graph below there because you cannot now this is for when you already have a graph yes when we talk about transformations absolutely our graph could be down like that uh, this is where we already given a graph and we're just taking the square root of it graph starts at that y value zero goes above if it's one because square root of one is one and then it's below and that's what we'll do in our next example so I want to identify a few things about our domain and range. So the domain of our radical graph, this is only for values of the domain for which our y value, our fx, is greater than zero. So basically above the x-axis. That's all that's saying that our domain here, we know that on this one, our y-intercept is 1.5. So our graph can only exist when our domain is, for this one, because this is a negative line, when our x's are less than or equal to negative 1, or positive 1, 0.5. The range consists of the square root of the values, and the range for which is defined. Now, it's not always going to start at 0 and go up, as we'll see in our next example. And the graph of y is square, square root of f of x, so this red graph exists only for our, when our y's are greater than 0. You can predict the location being relative, because we can take the square root of positive y's. We cannot do the square root of negative y's.
So for example, we can identify the domains and ranges of these functions. Y equals x squared minus one. So if we treat this as transformations, this is the same as x subtract zero squared subtract one, which means a few things. Our vertex is the point zero and eight of one. Or we can treat it as the fact that we have uh, let's see, original left and going blue. Yeah. We have gone zero left and right, and we have gone down one. So our graph starts at zero, negative one. Now, I like talking about the staircase method because it's really useful. As long as our A value is one, the parabolas always exist in this form. You go left or right one, you go up one. When you go left or right one more point from there, it goes up three. So over one, up one, then over one, up three. Over one, up five. Over one, up five. So you see that this is creating a staircase of one, three, five, and it will continue seven, nine, and that becomes symmetrical about that vertex, about our axis of symmetry. So we'll connect our dots. And that's our original graph. Now if we talk about our domain range here, our domain will be all real numbers. Because it's going left and right, it's continuing on forever. Our range would be all of our y's that would be greater than or equal to negative one. Whereas, if we're looking at the square root graph, now here's where it does get a little trickier. But we're going to use those same characteristics, which are written here. It's a lot easier just kind of having, knowing that we're just taking the square root of y's. Now this graph is a little trickier because it does branch off in two ways about the about that x-axis and the positive y's. So let's start off with just this right side. Let's look at the y values. So on this right side, zero and zero. Now approximately, we're not going to be perfect because our graph is considered a sketch because it's not done by graphic technology or anything like that. So if we want to find out where our graph is at 1, well, our graph is at 1 right here. This is the easiest way. You do 0, you do 1. Now you try and choose some values that are really nice to work with. I like 4 and 9 because when my graph, when my y value is 4, oh, this part of the graph is at 4. So the square root of 4 is 2. So since my graph is y equals 4 here, I'm just going to go straight below that and plot 2. My graph up here, so my Cartesian plane of y equals 9 is here, but the graph hits 9 just over here. So I'm going to go right below that and plot 3. I'm going to do this all in one fell swoop. But this first part I don't want you to draw just because I want you to, I just want to overemphasize this. And I don't want you to draw this first part. When we are in between 0 and 1, our radical graph has to be above our original graph. So just to over exaggerate, I'm going to make it look above. That is not the actual way that this graph would look like. If you zoom in properly, so again, this is not what I want you to draw. I want you to, you're just going to go a little bit above. It can be a little bit difficult, especially with pencil. If you have a different color, it works out really nicely. So you can kind of overemphasize it. 
but here's a little bit above. And then you go below. So how does I look on the other side? Well, zero, one. Again, I'm looking at my Y values for this graph. Square root of zero, zero. Square root of one is one. Nine is there. Four is there. So I hit three and two. I'm just going to be above. And then I go below it. So there's my square root graph. So it looks a little bit different. And in our next example, we'll see a few more. So let's talk about our domain array here. So our domain is only defined for the x values where our original graph is above the x-axis. Well, our x our graph is only above the x-axis when our x values are less than negative 1 and greater than positive 1. So the square root graph of this only exists when our x's are less than or equal to negative 1 and when our x's are greater than or equal to positive 1. Our range only exists for those x values that for when our domain is above the x-axis. And the good news is all of this is still just our y's that are greater than or equal to zero. So you can see that our domains and our ranges are quite different because what we are looking at is our y values. We can't do the square root of a negative one down here. But we can only do the values when our graph is above the x-axis, when our graph is greater than zero. Now let's look at some more. I do purposely have, so we've done a few of these already. We've done this one, and we actually did almost exactly this one. It looks very similar. I do this quite slowly, but these are done very quickly. I usually want to give like one mark for when I give you a question like this. So again, we're looking at where our y values are. Our y value is negative all on this part of this net, of this line. We're not going to be graphing any part that's in between here and here. Don't draw this. We can't do that. But our y is 0 here. 1 is 1, 4, square root of 4 is 2, a little bit above, and then as soon as after we, after we get that 1, we're below. And there we go, that's our square root graph. Now look, that looks really nice, because it's very similar to the way that we do any of our other radicals. Because our general radical graph looks like that. Well, this one looks good. This one looks like that. Even this one, we did a very similar one. Now, this is not the equation x squared subtract 1. It is a little more flayed out. Even though our vertex is at 0, negative 1, going over 1, it doesn't go up 1. So it's this means that we have a different a value. Again. Our graph is only defined for when our y values, when our graph is above the x-axis. This one, we know that it's going to look very similar to this. So our y values, zero. I like doing this, but you can do just one side at a time. See, our y values one here, and it's also one right here. Let's see, four is a nice number. Four, I'm going to go straight below that and put two. Four, I'm going to go straight below that and put two. Now, even though nine is right over there, I can approximate nine. I wouldn't have to, but it just helps me kind of know the general shape. Okay, the graph would be up at nine, like maybe that's eight and be up at nine, maybe there. So if I go straight down to three, it would look like there. 
when our y values are in between 0 and 1, we're above, hit the 1, and then we go below. 0, above, and then we go below. Those ones look very similar to this. When our graph is a little bit different, yes, I wanted to give you some of the other examples. We're going to follow those characteristics. Again, we're looking at the y values. You can see here, this graph does not hit zero at all. Our y value doesn't at zero does not exist. So we can't do the square root of zero. But we can do the square root of any of these values. Like, for instance, our graph hits five here. Well, square root of 5 is 2.24. Okay, so I just go straight below to 2.24, roughly. Is that where I start all the all time? No, I usually start my way up. So, 1. Well, perfect. This one hits 1. This is nice. This is very nice. But we don't have any... We don't have in between 0 and 1. But we do have, say, 4. So, why it goes 4 here. So, I'm just going to go straight below that to two. It also hits four here. So I go straight below that to two, and I'm right there. My graph hits nine up here on the left. Nine, I go down to three. Nine on the right side, I go down to three. So when we connect our dots, our graph is actually going to look like this. Now, does that look like a regular radical graph? No, because we don't have any values in between 0 and 1. So we can't hit 0. We can't go above our x-axis, or sorry, above the graph, because our graph does not exist in between 0 and 1. So meaning, all that we're worried, all that we're doing is when our graph is 1, well, it's going to hit 1. When our graph is greater than 1, our radical graph is just going to be below the original graph. 1, and then we're below it. That's all it is. Now, in comparison, D does exist in between 0 and 1. Our y value is 0, is both there and there. Our y value of 1 is right there and right there. Oh no, this is a, is a negative problem. What are we going to do? Well, let's follow the characteristics. All we're doing is taking the square root of values. I can do square root of 2, 1.41, square root of 3 is 1.73. Oh, but this, this graph hits 4. It's, 4 is a really nice number to work with. The square root of 4 is 2. Now, again, I could do the 1.73, 1.41. But let's follow our characteristics. We're at 0, we're at 0. We're at 1, we're at 1. Those are the really nice two points to start with. Now, when we are when our graph, this one, this black one, is in between zero and one, our radical graph has to be above. Our graph, our radical graph, has to be above the original graph. When our graph, this downward parabola is in is above one, greater than one, our radical graph. So my red has to be below the original graph. Zero, one, we're above, and then below. And this is generally the only kind of shape site we're working with. We're still following these characteristics. I start with 0 and I start with 1, I go above, and then I go below. 
I start with zero and one, I go above, and then I go below. Zero, one, zero, one, above, below. 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 Oh, there is no zero. So, we hit one. We are below the x or that original graph. Above, below. Have some fun.